Hello, my name is Neha Kulshresht and I am an assistant professor in the Indian Sign Language Research and Training Center. Today my colleague Mr. Sachin Singh and I will be recording the module Morphology of Sign Language. In this module, we will introduce you to the sign language morphology, explaining its various facets and its structure. We will also introduce you to the various sign formation processes, morphological structure and organization of sign language. My name is Sachin Singh and I work in ISLR TC as an instructor. In this unit, we'll first consider the various sign formation processes in Indian Sign Language lexicon. Secondly, we will examine the grammatical categories of these signs. We'll take examples from Indian Sign Language, but also examples from other sign languages wherever necessary. In this unit, we'll use a method to transcribe signs following a convention. Sign formation processes. It is an accepted fact that in deaf communication, mimesis is often the source of many signs. As discussed earlier, we have come across home signs, which often exhibit these properties initially, but become arbitrary in due course of time. A signer can make an iconic gesture to the referent either directly or by being the kind of thing referred. For example, by indexing, that is pointing to a referent to address the referent. Similarly, a signer may index to the body to mean body. This shows that signs can be iconic. On the other hand, a signer may depict the referent by forming the shape of it or by using the articulators like some sort of artist's implement. That is called substitutive depiction. In another form of depiction, the articulator leaves its traces as it moves or in which the articulator comes up to a point, stops and retreats, leaving its trace. These iconic aspects of signs are manipulated in the special heightened use, uses of language. It does not play any role in recognition and memory and in acquisition. The classification of iconic signs is as follows. Directly iconic, the example of the sign would be body. The first sign is directly iconic. The sign for this is body. It is clear from body that you are referring to body. The second iconic basis is metonymic. The sign example, the example sign for this is think. The next iconic basis is substitutive depiction. The example sign is bird. Fourth iconic basis is virtual depiction. The sign would be wrong. And the fifth one is mime. The ISL sign is type. These were the icon these were the classification of iconic signs.
Our next topic is finger spelling. Uh, finger spelling is also known as manual alphabet and dactylology. It is a system in which a particular hand shape in a particular orientation in a few instances a particular movement is used to represent spoken language orthography of an alphabet. It is mostly used for technical vocabulary, place, concepts, proper names, etc. New concepts for which there may be no exact equivalent in a sign language lexicon, finger spelling can be used for it. Finger spelling is a linguistic borrowing from another modality and often undergoes nativization masking its origins from spoken language and assumes the structural properties of sign. Such signs are called loan signs in, in, in sign language literature. In Indian sign language, it is one of the important and the productive word formation processes. The Indian Sign Language finger spelling system is based on the English alphabet rather than on the Devanagari. There are different ways to finger spell a word. The first way is complete finger spelling. The signer articulates the complete word alphabetically in the linear sequence. The second is initialized finger spelling. The signer articulates the initial first letter of the word. Example, L for lack, C for crore, etc. So for example, short for Prime Minister would be PM. The third form of finger spelling is abbreviated finger spelling. The abbreviation is often used by the signer to mean the whole word. For example, PM for Prime Minister or UP for Uttar Pradesh. Our next topic is coinage. In the Indian deaf community, a personal sign name is often coined on the basis of a person's physical or individual attributes and appearance, especially in terms of use of spectacles, different hairstyles, etc. Outside of names, coinage is used as resource everyday icons, logos, trademarks, symbols associated with concepts like internet, dollar, danger, percentage, etc. Our next topic is Reduplication. Reduplication is reiteration of a part of a sign or complete sign itself, where the reduplicated part expresses a different semantic notion from the base sign. It is one of the productive sign formation processes in Indian Sign Language. In Indian Sign Language, expressives have a reduplicated structure and constitute a single lexical category. For example, star. So when we use a similar action again and again, the meaning can be clear. Laugh, sticky, 
reduplication is must for these signs. In these signs, reduplication is of the local movement rather than the path movement. That is within a segment rather than, a, rather than of a segment. On the other hand, there are also signs in which reduplication involves two identical signs, technically known as complete reduplication. Similarly, in some signs, reduplication involves reiteration of any of the formational parameters of the sign known as partial reduplication. For example, the sign joke. The next we are going to talk about compounding. Compounding is used to create new lexical items for variety of purposes for which there may not be any lexical item in the lexicon. In Indian Sign Language, a large part of science is made up of compounding and is one of the productive word formation processes. Apart from the compounding of the roots, the Indian Sign Language compounds are also made of plural morpheme, finger spelling, classifiers and numerals. The compounds are made up of various word class. Compounds are made up of various word, cl word classes. These word classes are first noun plus noun. So for example, man plus Mary would be husband. Second is noun plus adjective. So man plus old would be grandfather. Third is noun plus verb. So, food plus distribute would be party. Fourth is noun plus adverb. For example, morning plus fast is dawn. On the basis of headedness of the compound, the Indian Sign Language compounds can be summarized as endocentric compounds, man plus marry is husband, stamp plus book would be passbook, stamp plus boss would be bank manager. We explained the endocentric compounds. Now, we'll show you the exocentric compounds. The example would be face plus fine is beautiful. Woman plus marry plus brother would be brother-in-law. Morning plus fast is dawn. Marry plus break is divorce. So these were the few examples of the endocentric and exocentric compounds. Now we are going to talk about localization and indexing. On account of modality differences, sign language employ a unique strategy to articulate various signs. Localization and indexing are one of the such one of the such strategies used for various functions. In the sign language, a signer can refer to someone or something either manually by indexing or non-manually with the eye gaze or the body orientation in a common observable space. 
for example if a signer wants to refer to a referent located in a common observable space there is no need to articulate a sign for him her or it rather an index to the particular referent suffices to refer to the referent in the absence of an appropriate referent in the common space however the signer articulates the sign for the referent and assigns it a distinct specific locus in the signer's right or left signing space through indexing where the referent exists virtually the articulation of the sign and assignment of particular locus to it together constitute what in the sign language literature is called localization a next topic is word class the indian sign language lexicon comprises of signs that are formed through various sign formation strategies these signs vary with each other on form and function on the basis of these differences these signs can be grouped together into word classes where each class is based on the shared meanings of signs in the language and similar morphological and syntactic properties however an individual sign may belong to more than one word class for example a sign may be a noun and verb depending on its sentential context and morphological characteristics in indian sign language nouns are articulated through three broad categories The first one is lexical nouns which are formed with sign for example house computer etc second is indexical nouns are articulated with index third is finger spell nouns these are formed with the help of finger spelling for example s i k k i m sikkim classifier is one of the nominal classification systems in indian sign language hand shape appears to vary according to the salient visual special visual special characteristics of the referent forming a semantic class there are 14 classifiers of which 12 take physical properties of the referent and vary according to size shape and textural appearance of the reference such classifiers which vary over size and shape are called size and shape specifiers in the sign language literature in indian sign language a large number of adjectives are not distinguished from the nouns their articulation is the same as for the noun for example strong and strength fool and foolish etc the nouns like colors shape and size perceptual states etc are formed into adjectives without the change in the articulation however they are distinguished from the nouns on the basis of their occurrence in the sentence or by morphological properties
On the other hand, some adjectives like clean is derived from the verb clean. That is done with a change in the movement, while other formational parameters are the same. The verb clean is articulated with small reduplicated movement, whereas the adjective is articulated with a single movement. Numeral and quantifiers are used for definite and indefinite quantification of nouns. Numerals and quantifiers are in complementary distribution in Indian Sign Language. So many is either postnominal or prenominal and may follow or precede a postnominal adjective. The signs such as some and few are articulated with the same manual parameters and expression that is squeezed phase and eye gaze fixed at the lexical sign. However, the sign for few has an additional expression, intense squeezed brow. The other quantifiers are every, each and all. Localization intru introduces a reference to the discourse and any subsequent index to the local locus refers to the referent. Such a strategy is like a determiner in English. For example, the sentence, once upon a time there was a king, the king had three daughters. A phrase, a king, introduces the referent in a discourse and refers to any king. On the contrary, the phrase the king refers to the king who is already introduced rather than another king different from the one introduced in the discourse. Although there are various accounts to argue that sun that such indexation is not an instance of pronoun, we'll assume them to be pronoun in this unit. The index to the signer and addressee is argued to be an instance of first and second person pronoun, respectively. The index to the ipsilateral or the contralateral referent is analyzed as third person. It is also analyzed that G or B hand shape is used in its articulation for singular. V hand shape for dual and arc for G or B for plural. On the other hand, the use of prenominal index to the reference is argued to be demonstrative. Example. This book is Although there are various accounts to argue that such indexation is not an instance of pronoun, we'll assume them to be pronoun in this unit. The index to the signer and the addressee is argued to be an instance of first and second pronoun, respectively. The index to the ipsilateral or the contralateral referent is analyzed as third person. It is also analyzed that G or B hand shape is used in its articulation for singular. V hand shape for dual and arc or G or B for plural. On the other hand, the use of prenominal index to the reference is argued to be demonstrative. For example, this book is good. Here, this comes or the index comes before book. Therefore, it acts as demonstrative in this example.
In Indian Sign Language, there are various strategi strategies in the articulation of adposition. It can be seen that adpositions do not have any particular sign. That is, they are phon phonetically null. As the locative noun phrase will give the sense of the location of the event with respect to the participants. So, for example, he laughed in the classroom yesterday. Here, when we sign study room yesterday, he laugh. So, when we sign study room, the location is clear. Therefore, the sign for in is not required. Now we'll discuss about other adpositions like on, in, above, under, where one of the hand shape articulates the noun and the other articulates the adposition. For example, he drank milk in the kitchen last week. So last week he in kitchen milk drink. Then there are some adpositions which are inherent in the lexical semantics of the verb and are realized through the grammatical relations of the verb. For example, I gave a mark to you. The positioning of the reference and the grammatical relations between them are enough to clarify the semantics of the adpositions. The other articulatory strategy is that noun sign is articulated in the location of the other noun to show the spatial relation among them. With dominant hand and non-dominant hand used simultaneously to represent the relationship between the sign. For example, he drove the car under the bridge. So here, we'll make a bridge with one hand and the car with the other and then the one hand will go below the other one. On the basis of their overt and non-overt realization in a sentence, the verbs can be classified into two groups. First, verbs that are overtly realized. These verbs are realized in the sentence. Their presence in the sentence is obligatory. Second, verbs that are not overtly realized. The copula and the possessive verb showing the inherent possession are not articulated in the sentence. So for example, I was angry or I have three younger brothers. In these constructions, we can find non-overt verbs. These are phonologically null but have semantic content. For example, I have a good idea. Now we have non-inherent possessions are marked by a sign have, which is compound of B plus at position. For example, I have some books. Now in Indian Sign Language, work Verbs can be typolized, typologized as in thus in Indian Sign Language, verbs can be categorized as plain verbs. The verbs which do not inflect for agreement are called plain verbs. 
the form of the verb is not determined by the referential features of its argument for example yesterday you run which means you ran yesterday the second category is agreement verbs those verbs that agree with their subject and object first is regular verbs the onset of the sign marks the subject and offset marks the object for example i gave a book to sita which will be signed as past i s i t a sita book give now backward verbs the offset of the sign marks the subject and the onset marks the object for example you got a book from me which can be signed as past you i book get the third is spatial verbs these verbs agree with the spatial reference that is locations the onset and the offset of the signs are associated with the actual locations the source of motion and the goal of motion respectively for example ram puts a bag in a box this can be signed as classifier for handle bag handle box ram and then put in indian sign language adverbs are distinguished from adjectives on the basis of their positional occurrence rather than in their articulation example beautiful or and beautifully are articulated in the same way however in the manner and the temporal verbs adverbs are fused together technically known as incorporation The example sentence for incorporation would be he drives the bus slowly Now we'll talk about derivational morphology Although there are a few instances of de derivational processes through which new signs are derived it is relatively impoverished in Indian sign language For example the noun color is derived from the adjective red with the change in the hand shape so clean adjective is derived from the verb clean and the change in the size of the path movement of the verb the agentive noun is formed by the compounding of the sign next we are going to talk about derivational morphology although there are a few instances of derivational processes through which new signs are derived it is relatively impoverished in indian sign language so for example the noun color is derived is derived from the adjective red with the change in the hand shape clean is derived from the verb clean with the change in the size of the path movement of the verb an agentive noun is formed by the compounding of the sign with the classifier person or the classifier boss example typist is a compound of type plus classifier person
Now we are going to talk about grammatical categories. Few of the grammatical categories are person, number, gender, tense, aspect, etc. First, we are going to talk about person. The grammatical ca category of person is defined with respect to the participant roles in the discourse. It refers to distinctions among the narrative participant reference of the pronoun. First and second persons always express the discourse roles of speaker and addressee respectively. The second grammatical category is number. The basic number distinction in Indian Sign Language is singular versus plural. The singular is morphologically unmarked whereas pluralization is articulated through various strategies. In sign which has contact with the body like sign for name, body or soap etc. and the nouns with path movement like advertisement, rat, teacher, experiment, etc. Pluralization is indicated by zero marking. The most common strategy employed for pluralization is noun reduplication. Where the noun sign is reduplicated thrice with a slight change of the location. For example, he helped Sita with books. Here, books will be repeated thrice. He, Sita, help. This would be the sign order. The next grammatical category is gender. In Indian Sign Language, it is observed that cock and hen is lexically different. The gender differences are in encoded for animate humans through a sign face. The animate usually has a sign if the nouns man and woman are not articulated, masculine and feminine are articul articulated with the hand shape G at the location at the location of moustache and location of nose groove for women the next grammatical category is tense the spatial location with reference to the sinus body front and back is used as a timeline to express time relative to the time of speech act. In Indian Sign Language, the surface manifestation of time in fundamentally rests on the visual timeline. In Indian Sign Language, Present tense is unmarked. There is no overt marking for the present tense. For example, I like you. The sentence does not have any tense marker for the present. But for the past and future, though they are articulated with the same hand shape, they have different formational parameters. For past, we sign towards backwards and for future we sign towards forward. For example, I was angry, past I angry and she'll arrive to Delhi, future she, Sita, Delhi arrive. The next grammatical category is aspect. In Indian Sign Language, 
aspect is marked on the verb by modulation on the sh on the one of the formational parameters of the verb like movement in terms of dynamics shape size and tenseness the first category of aspect is zero marking in indian sign language verbs like eat like sing walk dance are articulated as in their citation form and are morphologically unmarked the second would be continuative aspect continuative as aspect is expressed by lengthening of the movement of of the verb so for example she was crying yesterday so the sign would be she yesterday cry and the cry would be repeated it can be shown through triplication of the movement the next aspect is perfect aspect perfect aspect is grammaticalized from the sign finish it is articulated after the verb sign and is often criticizes to the verb like eat drink cry walk laugh etc so for example you have laughed the sign would be you laugh and finish the fourth is iterative aspect an adverb again undergoes weak drop and criticizes with other signs in their movement parameter like give send throw jump invite etc in its non criticized version it is a post verbal sign repeated after a brief pause to make the eventuality for example ram gives book to sita again and again here we'll duplicate the sign for again the next is frequentative aspect the frequentative aspect differs from the iterative aspect in both form and meaning it is articulated by lengthening with a single bigger slower triplicated concave movement of the verb sign with rounded thrust at the end and means for a prolonged period of time for example verbs like walk help hit tell send etc undergo modulation for frequentative aspect for example sita helps ram for a prolonged period of time so the sign would be ram sita help with a frequentative aspect the next aspect is inquative aspect the inquative aspect is formed by reducing the complete articulation of the verb to an abrupt hold to give the sense of about to in the example we can see the articulation of shoot is not complete so for example uday was about to shoot dharmesh sebaji caught him the sign would be something like past because it was about the past past dharmesh uday shoot sebaji catch here shoot would be in inquative aspect In this unit we explored an inventory of sign formation processes in Indian sign language and also provided a detailed exploration of word class and grammatical categories in Indian sign language We also saw 
how the notational convention works.